collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, and or cross watchers. Welcome to your five card draw. What do I need read for this new moon in Virgo to full moon in Pisces, August into September 2022. I am your reader. Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short. They're my initials. Mars conjunct uh, Leo rising. Don't be shocked. <laughs> President of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998. 24 years in service at the time of this uh, recording. Author of Words of Grace from a Professional Witch, which is what I am <laughs> available on Kindle. There's a link in the description box. You can preview it for free. Uh, it ain't that expensive, and it's got a lot of the wisdom and the grace that I learned in that at that point, 20 years of experience, I believe, when I wrote the book. Uh, so yeah, click the link if you want to check that out, because I am also a creator on Patreon. I gotta tell you, Mars Conjunct Leo Rising with its own Patreon platform, that's a field day. We're having a lot of fun over there. Uh, my angel, uh, my uh, humans, heroes, angels, witches, immortals, gods, goddesses are my subscription levels, tiers over there, adding mystic probably at this uh, new moon in Virgo. We'll see how much I get done because I'm maybe moving my house in the next month or so, literally moving upstate New York, uh, five hour drive away. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, they get the advanced content, they get the exclusive content, they get me every morning, hair doing what it's going to do, in a bathrobe, on the laptop, cup of coffee, talking about the day's astrological weather, uh, the spiritual applications, the magical implications, always ending with a little prayer, a little blessing, a little something, something at the end. Great way to start my day, and I know they're loving it big time. Uh, and it's on an unlisted uh, YouTube link, uh, YouTube chat link, right? Live stream, so they can chat with me every morning. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to do. So if you want a deeper experience, a little bit more magic, miracles, mysticism, and or mal, <laughs> go play Gian on Patreon, because really, I'm the Archangel of Lions. Mark Angelo Lyons, I keep telling people, but eh, just call me Mal, shall we? If you're new to the channel, a five-card draw is just one card from five different decks giving you clues, tips, and hints about a specific astrological timeline, a two-week period, waxing moon, new to full. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, these five decks also represent the five magical elements, fire, earth, air, water, and spirit. Uh, helpful to bring those into balance, into alignment for intentional work, magical work, manifestation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 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 fire, earth, air, water, and spirit to plant a seed at new moon and watch it grow to full. Most important readings I do here on this channel, <laughs> seriously, the five card draw, new to full, and the eight card draw, shadow reads, uh, from full to new, because it is plant the seed, watch it grow, weed the garden so that you can put, and it's a bit more specific, right? It's, 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 I love the timeless reads, they're great, but I think these actually serve on a more personal level, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, so it is a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs to get more information about the timeline we're about to look at, because your sun, your moon, your rising, and your Venus sign can have different takes on the same situation, as well as it could be four different things. You are waxing, planting a seed, and watching it grow. Let's look at the two-week period, the new moon in Virgo, Saturday, August 27th, 4.17 a.m. Eastern Time. I am in New York, so we'll be waking up uh, to that energy and planting a seed, literal or metaphoric, because Saturn, uh, the, the element of that day is Earth. It's not air, fire, or water. It is Earth. Uh, and Virgo is the mutable Earth sign, the changeable Earth sign. So it's just very right on for like anything you want to manifest physically, I would think. Uh, and then, of course, it is the building, right? You don't if I had that kind of power, right, uh, life would be different. <laughs> if we could instantly manifest, 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 manifest our heart's desires, which is what these readings are about. So it's good to take a two-week period, right, to the full moon in Pisces, Saturday, uh, the uh, September 10th. 5.59 a.m., so let's just say 6 a.m. That is the full moon I was born under. I'm a Virgo sun, Pisces moon, Mars conjunct Leon rising, and Venus conjunct Mercury in Libra. Does it make more sense? Do I make more sense now? It could, if you speak the language, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a very emotional uh, thing, that full moon with Virgo on the outer, Pisces on the inner. So this could be a very, very powerful um 
a very, very powerful two-week period for a lot of us, and here's why. The first card we're going to look at is the Element of Fire, Magical Spell Cards, Lucy Cavendish. Your heart's desire, right? The Element of Fire, what we yearn for, what we burn for, what our hearts desire, and your heart's desire is part of a larger plan. The ineffable great plan, if you want to good omens it, Neil Gaiman, Terry Pratchett it, you know, whatever you want to call it, Universe always has a plan. Uh, no matter how anything appears to be, Matt Kahn, you know, pick your version, the quantum unity, uh, all of that. So as you fulfill your heart's desires, because I don't think we chose them, I think that we were assigned them, <laughs> written into these lives before we incarnated, right? It's like, ooh, that looks like a juicy roll, <laughs> right? Quantum timelines varying from lead to gold. So here's an opportunity to make some more gold for yourself, so to speak. And as you do that, you're helping everybody else do the same. And cross-watchers, uh, if you apply what is indicated here to yourself, you're not just helping the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign you may be cross-watching for, but all of the Leo Collective, just saying. So, both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will. I'm going to give you the best I got uh, to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace to help you manifest your heart's desires this uh, new to full uh, August, September 2022. Enough explanation. Let's do divination. I love saying that. Please take a nice deep breath. And here we go. Still point. Using the magical spell cards by Lucy Cavendish, I call to the ancestors of magic, miracles, and mysticism, genetic, archetypal, symbolic, what have you, for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video, receiving this reading, in order to serve as many people as possible as needed. What is their element of fire, the spell fragment, to help them get clarity on that, to refine it a little bit? What they yearn for, what they burn for, what their hearts desire, that part of the plan that no matter how much they try and get rid of it or not, and don't go away, because it's just written in our hearts, but we did not write it there. So please, what's their element of fire, uh, this new two? Full August, September 2022. Lovely. It's the dreaming card. Dream sweet, sleep deep. Well, ain't that just like a feline? <laughs> My boys are just sacked out in a ray of light where they're still cool, where it's only like on the floor. <laughs> you know. Uh, dream sweet, sleep deep. Sleep that's deep and lasts till morn in the wood in the morn. Uh, wondrous dreams for days reborn. Now, keeping in mind, that's just what's coming in from over here somewhere, you know, Fifth House Leo is all about creativity and good fortune and how much creativity is set up during the dream time. Hmm? Interesting. I mean, it could be about anything. This could be about your heart's desires, manifesting dreams. We're going to go a little fast and loose on the interpretation there just because it's the first card down. But I know I don't get as much sleep as I need. I'm working all the time, inner and outer, right? It's not just about being on camera. It's about doing the spiritual practice as an artist, a mystical artist, uh, to keep myself in alignment and clear and in balance. And that work, career, playtime, rest balance is hard to do when you're driven, perhaps, as some form of artist. So let's ground that. The fuel to feed the fire, the element of earth. We're using the crystal oracle, Tony Carmine Salerno. If you have the stone indicated and want to use it as a touchstone, as a spell piece, whatever, a magical carrier, great. But if you don't, that's okay. If you don't have it, you can't get it, because some of them are rare. Uh, certainly, clear quartz does everything. You can pick up a rock from outside if necessary. Use whatever you got. You can even use a piece of jewelry, which got to say lot more Leo. Uh, so let's see what hits the table, regardless of the stone. Uh, the oracle message in the bookie book, I think, is often helpful and uh, can bring us a little bit more specific to this general read. Breathe. Hmm. Still point. <laughs> As I call upon my beloved Archangel Ariel 
the archangel, one of the archangels of earth powers of the north, hence the crystal oracle, please, beloved archangel of lions, aerial meaning the lion or lioness of God, please, one card in clarity, the perfect uh, crystal oracle message, regardless of the stone, but if they happen to align and it's something that they can get a hold of, so Mona B, please, one card in clarity for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Suns, and Cross Watchers watching this video and receiving this uh, uh, reading for the element of Earth. Yes, a touchstone, a magical carrier, what have you, but their element of Earth, uh, to f the fuel to feed the fire to ground and manifest this heart's desire from this new to full rhodochrosite not the hardest thing to find i use it for past life work but i think in uh this uh deck it's more about relationships and projections good old rhodochrosite there's also rhodonites in the book it's got black in it it's beautiful stone but it's not they're they're like cousins not exactly the same rhodochrosite and rhodonite do you get to have the <laughs> <laughs> that was a Rhoda joke. <laughs> Carlton, the doorman. Uh, Rhodochrosite, yeah, here we go. Um, the key words, relationships, compassion, blessings, love, and joy. I'm going to keep that to the side because that's a five is a little hard to remember when all the other info hits the table. But here's what it says. It is through our relationships with others that we learn more about our own character. Yes, yeah, about mirroring. Uh, from a higher perspective, everyone we encounter is a reflection of ourselves, and the universe has placed around us the things that will help us expand our love and tolerance. And that's true, but the idea of being, uh, you spot it, you got it every single time, isn't exactly right. Waiting to hear if that's the garbage truck. No, I don't think it is. Sorry. <laughs> I will pause this thing. Uh, there is a wonderful video in the description box. There's a section, like extended learning or whatever, applicable videos. I forgot what I called it. Uh, but you can find it on YouTube. Uh, it's called The Seven Essene Mirrors, E-S-S-E-N-E, -S -E -E, by uh, our beloved Greg Brayden. Uh, Greg Brayden, ex-NASA scientist, whatever, became a mystic. He's, it's from the 90s. He's got this killer mullet. He's so cute. Go check it out uh, if you want, because there are seven different mirrors. The mirror of now is the one that everybody has spotted. You got it, but there's more with than that. Mirror of judgment, for example. Right? Somebody does the exact opposite of what you do. Right? It's like, how is that in me? It's not. But it's pointing out where your judgments are, your negative judgments. Uh, we meet people we like and people we dislike. Sorry, I have a kitty cat bonking against my leg. Come on up, buddy. Uh, when we see what we consider uh, to be positive traits in others, we align with those characteristic traits because we uh, believe them to be good. Of course, right? When someone's generous and you're generous and kind and, you know, all of that, that's lovely. Yet, when we see what we consider to be negative aspects in others' characters, we refuse to see those same traits in ourselves because we judge them as bad. And yes, though that is true, like I said, it can be the opposite, right? Can't stand liars, right? These chords alone. I took vows to be honest and truthful but with compassion, because truth without compassion is brutality, says His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and I'm going to take him at his word. Uh, yet the truth is, is that we each have each trait within us, in the collective unconscious and in the subconscious mind, sure we do, uh, either currently or in the past. Otherwise, we would not be able to recognize those traits in another. Uh, past life, schmass life, last week, 10 years ago, who cares? You are being urged to examine the traits you don't like in others rather than merely judge them as bad or avoiding them. Uh, look at what they reflect within you. You got an affirmation at the end of this one. Uh, developing a compassionate attitude will help you realize that often the judgments we make about others or judgments we make about ourselves, well, the content may be the same, but the form is different. Of course, in miracles, right? It's still guilt. It's still lead, it's still shadow, it's still pain, it's, you know, it needs more love, not less, just don't let it drive the show, but it can show up in a billion different forms. In fact, it already is. 
Uh, all relationships are a mixture of positive and negative in a dualistic paradigm, third and fourth dimension. Yes, that is true, but it's not the ultimate truth. They help us uh, broaden our understanding of life and love and help us to see more of who we are. Now, I will say before I do the affirmation, I use this for past life stuff. Because past life stuff, mostly about relationships, right? Not just the romantic kind, right? To see that your mother in this life was your child in another, for example. Not saying that happened to me, I don't know, but maybe. Everything's probable in the quantum, quantum, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly. I love and accept myself as I am. Thank you, Louise. Hey, wherever you are. I love and accept the world as it is. That might take some time to integrate. Uh, deep in my heart, I know that beyond my perceptions of good and bad, only love exists. And that is referring to the divine unity of it all. Now, how that applies to dream, sweet, and sleep deep, I don't know yet. But certainly, if you are having dreams of people uh, recurring, I would think, as heroes and or villains, you could apply that there, right? Past life, schmass life, who cares? You know, the thing I love about reincarnational, you know, stuff, right? past life stuff and all that, is that there is no way to prove it. Although these little kids saying, yeah, I remember my name was John, this and that, and I lived here, and then they go find the birth records and the death records, and it's like, okay, that's a little spooky kid. Cool, though. Blessed be. Hey, little star children. Hey, little indigo crystals, whatever. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, keep it in the yeah, we'll see when I croak, right? We'll see what happens. Let's not take all that too seriously. After all, we're Leo, Mars, can uh, Leo is like rising Venus signs. All right. The element of air. Look, air can exist without fire. Fire cannot exist without air. Try it. It doesn't work. So we're going to use the Healing with the Angels Oracle. Two ways to use these cards. Both are often helpful. One is whatever is written upon the card. Element of air is thought. The mind. Think about it. Research it. Find the original meanings and definitions of words. For example, the word gorgeous is from the ancient French. I didn't even know there was an ancient French. And it means elegant. Well, is everything that we consider gorgeous elegant? I don't think so, right? So sometimes that finding of that definition can click it into place for you on a bit more personal level for a general read. The other is, is these are healing angels. They won't come unless you call, right? They know you're, they know what's going on. That card's going to point you in a direction, but you have free will to choose whether or not to call upon them. And it doesn't have to be this great big, you know, dramatic thing. Like if it's the healing of, I don't know, let's pick one of the ones that's not here. Uh, <laughs> The healing angel of house cleaning is moving my house. Help, right? There's your prayer. There's your meditation. There's the mantra. Although we're ending with a Matt Kahn mantra. So let's ask the angels. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Still point. <laughs> Feels good though. I call upon the angels and archangels of fire, the sign of Leo, powers of the south, the legions of Archangel Michael, who was just in the Cancerian read uh, from this deck. Please, one card in clarity for the Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video, receiving this reading for the element of air to stoke and, and inflame that fire to manifest their heart's desire of uh, sweet dreams and deep sleep with that rotocrosite relationships, love, compassion, projection, compassion for themselves, all that mirror stuff. Maybe there's some past life stuff in here as well. So uh, what's the element of air here as well as the perfect healing angels for the Leo Collective and Cross Rocher? The air to stoke the fire and manifest their heart's desire. Uh, this new moon in Virgo to full moon in Pisces. August, September 2022. Sometimes they won't give it to me until I, until I say it right. Oh, and the healing angels of blessings, of blessings. Now, hold, hold on a tick. Wasn't that word blessing in here? See, I didn't put it aside, but I should have. Uh, relationships, compassions, joys, blessings. So I'm considering that a double whammy. Now here's the question to ask yourself in my humble, where it's conjunct, we are rising opinion, which I don't think scans. Uh, um, <laughs> 
how would that help, right? Well, what would the healing angels of blessings do? Well, they would certainly send you healing blessings, one would think, but they might also be able to heal your ability to bless because we all have the capacity to, right? We all have the potential of blessings within us, right? However they manifest, they manifest, but we are the conduits, the channels, the whatever, the messengers of it. So there's all sorts of ways to play that out, particularly if you are getting stuff in the dream time, in the sleepy time. Uh, uh, inspiration, stuff like that. But just know that to call, I call upon the healing angels of blessings to help me see what the blessing is here. Could be helpful, right? Particularly C, third eye. Let's move on to the element of water. We're using the Whispers of Love Oracle, consecrated, blessed, whatever, to the higher selves of all involved. Since other people seem involved here because of the relationship stuff, uh, their higher selves get a say too. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Still point. as I call upon the higher selves of all involved. Fifth dimension and above eighth chakra and above what is the whisper of love? Uh, the piece of information, inspiration, insight needed for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video and receiving this reading for the element of water, the heart stuff, the emotional stuff, the energy in motion that we call emotion as uh, divine beings, as immortal souls on a hero's journey in human bodies. What do you got? The whisper of love to help us manifest this uh, sweet dreams and deep sleep with this rhodochrosite energy of relationships and love and projection and mirroring with the blessing Maybe we are able to see the blessings more with that rhodochrosite with the healing angels. If there may be hidden blessings in this we are not aware of. So please, what you got for us? This uh, new to full. Actions speak loudly. Ah! Actions speak loudly. Express your love through your actions. Oh, what I just said about blessings, that may seem passive at first. It paves the way. May you be blessed. Blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be. Silently, aloud. It's a good way to bring this into alignment, particularly if you see somebody that, that you don't like. It's okay to not like people, by the way. It's not, it, well, here's how it goes. The intuition starts usually in the lower gut when it comes to other people somewhere around there, right? And it's like, and what the ego does is turns it into a judgment. Where What it's really saying underneath it is something's off here. Something's off here. It is an intuitive hit, right? But the mind does what it does. So there may be some hidden blessings here to help you just silently bless. May you heal. To me, that's the best hacks ever. May you heal. You could say it like... Verbis Diablo, may you heal. <laughs> Penny dreadful for you there. Oh, Ava Green, Ava Green, Ava Green. For Ava Green. Uh, so actions speak loudly. That is very Leo about putting your love into action. Hey, booger. Uh, and, you know, maybe this is a romantic thing, because who do we tend to judge more? <laughs> who do we tend to project more onto than our romantic interests? Um, it's not screaming it, but we still got one more card down. And the healing mantra, the Macon healing mantra deck. All of my readings have it because this deck is amazing. It's been really helpful for me as a healing tool for what, almost three years now, maybe longer. Uh, as well as a lot of my clients get it. A lot of my people on Patreon have it. So they know, we know what we're talking about when somebody brings up one of these mantras. So it's the element of spirit to charge the whole thing, right? So you grow a piece of rhodochrosite, you could use rose quartz or whatever. And, you know, cast the spell, the intention, whatever, call in the healing angels of blessing with the intention, right, to take whatever this is, sleep that's deep, and last till morn, wondrous dreams for days reborn. So it's not just a, a good night's sleep and dreaming, it's dreams for days reborn. This is a waxing read. So, you know, is it to manifest, maybe that's what it takes to manifest your heart's desire. Your heart's desire may not be about sleeping, although you never know. <laughs> Lately, I could certainly use some more. So, let's see what hits the table.
please take a nice deep breath. Mm. Still point. Mm. Okay. As I call upon the Ascended Masters of Soul Contracts, I wasn't expecting that, because yeah, this is relational based. Please, beloved ones, one card in clarity. Special section of the Akashic Records Law Firm, please. One card in clarity, the perfect healing mantra for the Leo Collector, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Watching this video, receiving this reading, because I'm sort of getting the hint, the hit and the hint and the tip that this could very well be a romantic thing, right? Particularly if the dream is sort of that dream that we have of that happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, soulmate contract, but then understanding there is that process of being very compassionate and gentle, because ain't everybody gonna, you know, be that way 24-7, 365, when we ourselves are not, right? Good days, bad days, ups and downs. Uh, so give them the perfect healing mantra, knock them out of the park so they can cast for this sweet dream and deep sleep, whatever that means, with that rotocrosite energy, love, compassion, joy, but there are blessings which seem dominant with the healing angels of blessings called in so that their actions can speak loudly and they express their love through them for the well-being of all. This uh, new to full August, September 2022, befriending pain, not a total womp womp, but I think I get where this is going. When discomfort becomes a friend, my most limiting beliefs are healed. I think I know what this is. So the difference between having a dream come true and taking the hero's journey towards that dream are different things, and yet they are the same. The manifestation of conflicts and judgments and stuff like that. We are going to go through emotional pain, right? Even when you meet somebody. Or, you know, again, take it out of romantic sexual for a moment. Some relationship where you see the amazing part of that person and you just love them, love them, love them, uh, as well as those that may be in your life that it's like, ugh, <laughs> again, right? So, you know, as Leos, to be able to demonstrate what we need to demonstrate while at the same time understanding that we are releasing things from the cell tissue, ancestral patterns and all of that stuff. In other words, this doesn't have to be physical discomfort. It certainly can be emotional, mental discomfort. So for you to come from a place of love emotionally on this with the healing angels of blessing, they might very well show you the hidden blessing in this relationship in terms of what it's doing for you and making your dream come true. That's what I get. But relation, hey, look, it's a hero's journey. Hero's journey is full of relationships. Uh, you know, uh, heroes, villains, compatriots, sidekicks, uh, uh, what have you, right? Demons, dragons, soothsayers, wizards, kings, queens, all that. Archetypally speaking, we're not even talking fiction. This is just Carl Jung, white courtesy telephone. Uh, Joseph Campbell, I love you. Uh, oh, I missed it. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, befriending pain. Let me read this for you. When I, when discomfort becomes a friend, my most limiting beliefs are healed. This is the mantra, by the way, that got me to make the jump to Patreon because I was burnt out and my lower back was killing me. I made friends with the pain. Cried a lot. <laughs> Hurt a lot. But phew. I knew what to do afterwards. Uh, when you befriend pain, you are allowing... Uh, limitations to be released from the cells of your body. The, bio, the emotional biochemical parts being released and all that, it's a lot. Uh, because pain is often the result of rapid transformation, and you know we like rapid transformation. The pain is an indicator of that. It is essential to make friends with it in recognition of how quickly you are evolving. Uh, it might be uncomfortable and, uh, and sometimes nearly unbearable, but your most profound shifts in consciousness often occur once pain is befriended as an ally of your evolution. And here's the truth of it. It can be delayed but not prevented. Sure, you can push it down. Sure, you can medicate it. You can ignore it. Push it back down in that shadow. But what it's doing is not just going into your cell tissue. It's going into your personal subconscious because that's where it was rising from. And under that is the collective unconscious. So you just push in that pain down. And that's what drives people to do horrible things in this world. 
pain. Nobody hurts anybody else, steals, lies, unless they're in pain. And that's the truth. And that might very well be what it is that you're seeing or have the opportunity to see. Check out the Greg Braden thing. Grab a piece of Red Crow site. I would highly recommend it. Oh, I forgot the last little part. It always says this mantra is really good for... Sorry. I'm sorry. This mantra is ideal for healing the body, mind, and soul on an, and spirit on an energetic level. That makes sense. So this is a healing thing. So there are blessings here, double whammy. And it might be the very things that you're dreaming, but I would also say keep an eye on your dream time. Uh, you know, I've, I don't remember my dreams. I think it's just an occupational hazard of what I do every day. I'm always tapping into those different levels of consciousness and intuition and all of that. Clairvoyant, empathic, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but nonetheless, if, if one really stands out, um, see who the person is. And, and I remember from the Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield, what was the overall feeling? What was the emotion going on in the dream, whether it was a happy dream or a nightmare? Sandman. <laughs> oh, Corinthian, we thought we knew you. Uh, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put it together on what we call a blessimation over on Patreon. That's where that word was born. A blessing and a summation here. And then if you like, hang out till the end because uh, we'll chat a little bit as I release the reading and we just see what the heck comes out of my mouth. I got the hardware though. Please take a nice deep breath. Mmm. Yeah. Still point. As I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Leo collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video and receiving this reading, may they be blessed with all that they need to get what they need to befriend pain because uh, when discomfort becomes a friend, our most limiting beliefs are healed. And that is actually true. If you make your way through it, it can be delayed but not prevented. Don't delay if you if you can avoid it because it's something about their actions uh their actions speaking loudly and that not o need not not always be a gigantic fireworks display that can be su through simple little interactions so to call upon the healing angel of blessings to show them the blessing in this person what they've learned from them the blessing they can give the blessing they can receive because apparently that happens in all the soul contracts regardless of twin flame or soulmate but certainly connecting with that rotocross side vibe to really get i gotta be loving and compassionate here because it's true we are all one and in other lives we've all been villains and we've all been victims and we've all been damsels and we've all been knight king queen fool all of it <laughs> peasant mystic Hermit, we've done all of them. That's why the archetypes are so strong, right? You know, because their their patterns have been on this planet for a very long time. Although the computer geek, I gotta say, is new, right? Part of the engineer uh, schemata of archetypes. So, so that we can kind of learn that and, and and understand that it's not the form, it's the content that we all have pain inside that is there to be healed, right? With that befriending pain, so that they can really have better days here so that they can wax this little by little uh, with this uh, sweet dreams and deep sleep. May they be best. May they be blessed with sleep that's deep and lasts till morn. Wondrous dreams for days reborn, for the well-being of all, oh, and with harm to none, as we will it, so let it be done, so let it be, and so it is. It had a nice gentle feel to it, though. Like, I don't think this is going to be the horrible, horrible, horrible thing just because that befriending pain is there. Yeah, just, uh, it's interesting. So if it made sense, if you liked it, hit the thumbs up. Helps the other Leos and cross watchers find it. You want more of me here on YouTube, subscribe. And I do recommend hitting the notification bell because I am doing laundry after this. Packing, sorting, and all of that. Getting ready to move my house. I'm not sure exactly when yet. Uh, and uh, again, if you want more magic, more miracles, more mysticism, more Malcolm, Patreon on Patreon having a lot of fun over there. It really, it's not only kept me going, I love keeping it going. It's a real Leo Rising fun fest over there. 
And uh, yeah, so you want to go deeper, more magic, miracles, mysticism, Malcolm, Patreon, on Patreon, the Archangel Alliance, Mark Angel Alliance, but you can call me Mal. Bam. And if you want to book me for a private reading, it's easy enough to do. There's a link in the description box. A video here on YouTube, booking a reading with Mal. Explains it all for you. Just like Clarissa. Wishing you all the very best and the very blessed. Hang in there, my Leonines, my Lyrians, my Fifth Housers. Hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.